In this video I'm going to share with you 6 websites that I'm using almost every day. I think these websites are improving my web development skills, they are helping me out in my daily routine, my daily tasks, and also they are keeping my mind sharp to stay updated with all the new technologies and trends in today's crazy tech world. If you are new to this channel, I'm OrgDev, I have 15 years of experience in web development and I created this channel so I can help out all the people who want to learn something about web development. So let's go to our first website. First one is roadmap.sh and this one serves as a guide for developers to plan out their career. And believe me, this one is not only for beginners but also for experienced developers. For example, if we check out this front-end roadmap on this website, we can see here that it is starting from the basics, which is internet in our case, and we have here points. So how does the internet work? What is HTTP? What is a domain name? And all that sweet stuff. I would say that 50% of developers are not familiar with this subject here. And for you, only being on this website that already gives you advantage over a lot of developers. And this website not only provides you what should you do next, but also when you click on each milestone, you have here exactly the articles, websites, and even videos, how to learn about this particular milestone. So if I click, for example, on how does the internet work article, I'm opening it in a new tab, and here we can read and learn about the internet, and all of these articles are available to us on roadmap.sh for free by its amazing creators. And this website is going so deep in each roadmap, whenever someone asks me, can you create a video about a roadmap, how to become a web developer, front-end, back-end, or whatever, I always send them the roadmap.sh. Because here we have detailed about each technology, what should we learn, in which direction should we go, and what is the next step for us. Here, for example, you need to choose your framework based on your desires and based on your preference. But in this moment, when you are choosing your framework, if you passed all of these, you probably already know what are you going to pick because you saw it online, you saw it in some video tutorials by me or by someone else, and you know that you're going to pick React, for example. But if you love it, if you have maybe some kind of job or a friend in some company that is working with Vue, you can always choose Vue, you can choose both. I mean, you can learn every framework from here and it is going to be totally okay. You just need more time to adapt and to learn all of these technologies. Great thing on this website also is that it is not only for web, you have here a lot of roadmaps. So you have front-end, back-end, DevOps, you have even blockchain, cybersecurity, technical writer, whatever you need. If you are maybe just interested, how can you become a UX designer? You can just go here and check out what are the steps that you need to take to become anything you want from this list. And second website is this Vapalizer or Vapalizer, whatever it's called. For some reason, I'm calling it Vapalizer, like vape. So this Vapalizer is used mostly as an extension in our web browsers. In my case, it's Google Chrome, and it gives us insight which technologies are used on some website. So for example, if we go on orgdev.com, my website, and here I have my extension, Vapalizer, Vapalizer, and I click it, we are going to get detailed preview of all the technologies that are used on my website and even the versions. So you can see that I'm using here Next.js 14.2.5. You can see that I'm using Google Analytics, React. Then here we have Node.js, Sentry, YouTube Player, and basically it's seeing completely everything, even the UI frameworks. So here, not only that I'm using ShedCN, but it also saw that ShedCN is using Redix UI. So we have a complete overview. What are we using or what is used on some website? And why is this important for web developers? Well, from my personal experience, I can tell you, I had a job interview and for example let's imagine that's roadmap.sh and before my technical interview i went to vapalizer vapalizer and here i was checking which technologies are they using and i saw 
that they're using Next.js 12. And the current version was back then, I think, also 14. And I asked them on the job interview, why are you using 12? Why are you not upgrading your dependencies? And they were like, oh, well, how do you know we are using Next.js 12? And that's the magic of Vapalizer Vapalizer. They were impressed by me because I knew which technologies they're using. And by the way, I didn't get the job, but life goes on and let's move on to our next website. Next one is this API ninjas.com, but it doesn't have to be this one. It is just important that it is any API that is returning images. I have five or six of them. I'm going to leave you the list in the description below if you need it. So why do we need this one? Because if we need to mock some kind of API with some images and we need to re return some images, then we can use this free API. And if we send our request, we are going to get here the image and it is always going to be random. So we can mock it up. We can just test it out. How does it look on the front end and use these images as mocks. You have a bunch of libraries doing the same thing, but this one was somehow always much easier for me just to take this URL fetch it and use it in my application to test out if everything is working fine. And on this website, it's not only the images that you can mock, you can basically mock whatever you want. You can have this IBAN number or some crypto price or converting currencies and all the stuff like that. So you can use here pretty much whatever you want inside of your project. And the next one is probably familiar to most of you and that's daily dev application. In this application, you have your own feed of articles and you have your feed settings so you can put there whatever you want. For example, I probably have most of them here. Yes, in web development. So mine are AppWrite, CSS, JavaScript, Frontend, gRPC, React Hooks, etc. And based on my feed settings, I'm getting this feed on my home screen. And the reason why you don't see the URL, it's because I'm using their extension. So if I go to a new tab, I'm always opening the daily dev application and I always see something interesting, something that I want to read. How does it work is anybody can submit a link, but that link needs to be approved. So you cannot just put some your own blog from orgdev.com. I mean, maybe orgdev is going to be approved also. I'm not sure. I never tried, but they're mostly approving things like YouTube, Medium and those like official and known URLs. And once those URLs are approved, we can go on some link and click it. And here we see that these hashtags are matching with my feed settings from my profile. So that's the reason why this article is in my feed. And once I click on it, I'm going into the new tab. And here we are on the bytes.dev. I'm already subscribed to these guys and we can read the article. We can see this Shrek Samurai, really funny picture. And great thing is that you can track how many articles you read. So if we go to my profile here, you can see that it's my current streak day number 198. And if we go to my profile and here, if we go below, you can see that I started reading articles on this January 31st and until this day I didn't stop. And also you can see the percentage of all the hashtags, what am I reading exactly? So they created this perfect gamification for their app and I really love it. Also this GitHub contributions thingy, it's really nice because all of the users are developers and we are all familiar with this kind of look for our contributions. And there are also squads here on daily dev and I have one of my own and that's the horde. So you can come here on daily dev and join the horde to become a true web dev warrior. So here I'm putting all of my videos. You have comments also here. And also there is now a new feature with uh, Slack connected to the horde. So you're welcome to join if you want. It's really funny to me that I learned about daily dev so late. They exist for three or four years, maybe even more. And as you saw, I started reading on January 31st, thanks to one of my friends. And now I'm reading every day. I'm posting articles. I have my own reputation and stuff like that. So this is definitely recommended for every web developer out there.
And this one I really love, ray.so. This one is used to share code blocks. You probably always have that one friend who is telling you, hey, send me the fix, how are you doing that? Send me that code. And then you go to your code, and for example, we choose this form schema, and then you send him on Viber like this, and in the end, it looks probably something like this when you send it to him, and it's ugly as hell. Or if you are on Slack, you can use, of course, always the ticks, but still, sometimes this one even doesn't look good. It looks like this or something like this. So ray.so is a great solution. We just go here, click, paste, export an image, and we are getting our ray.so export. We can also here call it whatever we want. So we can call it form schema fix and then export it again. And we just open it. It's on my second screen. Here it is. Look how amazing this one looks. And we even have the syntax colors. So you can see that object, string, email, it's green, and these integers are blue, two and 50. And you can take this image and just send it to your friend, to whatever application, Viber, WhatsApp, or whatever it is, and he can just copy it from here and use as a fix. Now, I'm not sure if this is only the MacBook magic, like copying this text, from image directly, but what you can do also, maybe that's easier also, is here, instead of exporting image, you can just copy the URL and you go to your new tab and enter, and here your friend again gets exactly the same code and he can see exactly what's happening in this one and he's not going to be confused by syntax or anything like that. And final one is readme.so, lot of SOs. This website is used to create your readme files. And if we go here to get started, you can see that whatever we are typing on the left side, it's here displaying on the right side. And this one is really useful when you are writing your readme file, because here in our Orkish full stack admin, if we open our readme file, here you can see that we have a bunch of text and we are not aware how is it going to look inside of our GitHub. So here I can just copy and paste it and we are going to get detailed preview how is that readme looking inside of our GitHub page. To show you just quickly, where is that one displayed? So here our readme is displayed on our GitHub repository below of our files. So here we can see exactly the same readme and it's completely the same like here previewed in readme.so. I think it's really important to write clear and concise readme files for each new developer that comes to your GitHub repo, especially on this one like Orkish full stack admin, where there are a bunch of people from YouTube coming and they're wondering what is this application, application used for, and then they can read here in the overview and getting started and everything, how to install the whole application and set up. So readme.so, really great to document all your stuff that you are working inside of your project and to get a good overview and not push bunch of times and test on GitHub if it is looking good or not. I hope this video was helpful to you. If you have any more questions, I'm always answering all the YouTube comments out there. And also you have a Discord channel where you can ask something in our tavern, sit by the fire and talk. You have the invitation in the description below. Join the horde and become a true web dev warrior.